Hi everyone, welcome back. This is a uh, motorcycle rescuer. I am the motorcycle rescuer. Um, I was aware that yesterday's upload, it, it went a bit weird. I had to upload it twice. And then the sound went weird in one part. I'm not really sure what happened there, so apologies about that. But I'm also aware that it cut out and you didn't really get to see this bike in its full glory. Um, so the bike, I believe, is ready and mot -able. Uh, starts, runs and rides absolutely beautifully. When me and John test rode it yesterday evening, the headstock was slightly loose and rattly, so we nipped uh, this, all these top panels back off and nipped that up again. And we're left with a bike that's pretty cool and kind of ready to go. I want to get some back to black because you can see here, these panels just need a bit of love. This panel too. Um, WD-40 will do a similar job, but it might be a bit slippery, so... Or well, to be fair, back to black is slippery as well. It is just a thin oil. Um, we were considering heating up these stickers. You see where they're a bit patchy? Taking them off, it'll be lovely white underneath. Um, so that is an option, just heating up both these stickers and taking them off. But it's an option that's a bit of a pain, isn't it? Because um, you have to actually heat it. And I have no power here. Although, I do have a new generator that I've not started yet. So I'm going to be giving that a try at some point. It's an 800 continuous watt generator, so I don't know what that will power. I guess a small heater if you really wanted, a light bulb, a couple of light bulbs, maybe some small power tools. I don't know about a hairdryer, I'd have to um, check that out. Uh, I put a coat of Hammerite on the bar ends because they were rough. Now they look better already actually. And, uh, and obviously we painted the exhaust, which just, you know, it looks rough, but it does the job. I might look for this cover here. But I'm actually losing a, a lot of money on this bike with this swap with the Vespa, so I don't want to go too nuts. This also has a good working back box that comes with it for free, and everything else is fine. So it's a nice bike. I'm off to help somebody out. It's about an hour's drive. We are putting a new carb onto her bike. She just joined my, um, my group, Motorcycle Rescuer and Jake Corb Parts on Facebook. Anyone's welcome to join that group, just, just find it on Facebook and click and I'll add you. Uh, so if you want to chat to some of the people that you see on this channel, then that's where you do it. Uh, I'm sitting here thinking, what do I need? I've got a carb here, I've, the screws are normally 8 mil, but if you're doing any kind of travelling, an 8, a 10, a 12, a 13 and a 14 is probably what you need, a flathead and a Phillips. Um, and then I bring my little grips down there because they're so handy for screws that are set. And I've also got a selection of jets. So I will do some filming now. I don't think she'll mind. And I'm going to be popping off her old carb, which looks a bit cruddy, and putting a new carb on with the new jetting. And hopefully we get a bike that runs a bit smoother and is a bit quicker. So that's going to be an interesting project today. I'm going to show you uh, the final touch of the bobber yesterday. I added its uh, fake nitrous bottle, which I think looks great. John was not impressed. And, uh, and we'll just kind of polish up some of the bits we've got today. But uh, I'm pleased. So I'm off to do this journey. Oh, bring your helmet. Camera stand, that's going to help. Helmet for test riding the bike before and after. Obviously that makes sense. Although, get the person to do it. They know their bike best. So I'll, I'll try and get Amanda to do that as well. And uh, hopefully, it's an hour's drive. I've got the tools I need. Otherwise, I'm screwed. So guys, I'm here at the destination. This is the SIM we're looking at today. This is the SIM TURD125. And that's the cave that Amanda put on it. Um, I mean, it's, it's a great exhaust. It looks amazing. I can put my fist in there. Oh my God. Um, but it needs to be jetted appropriately for to manage that. At the moment it starts and runs and rides, but it's running very lean. You can see it, you can hear it, you can smell it, and it just won't last very long. And then when I looked at the carb to consider up jetting, I saw all of this. You see all this kind of fuel spill and sp look, this carb is just so unhappy. It's all crap and caked and 
for like 20 quid you can get a new carb and upjet it. So that's the route we've gone down. I've got a new carb in the car. I need to see what my jetting is at this stage. And then um, I need to compare to this jetting. And then we upjet from here. So if this is running a 98 for example, we'll go up to a 100 or 105 or something similar. Car? Yeah, I like that car actually. It does everything I need. So guys, looking at this new jet, it has no markings on it. That means we don't know what we're starting with. Now if Amanda's own jet doesn't have markings on it, then we're in a position where we're, we're completely guessing and it would be, you'd be chucking in jets and trial and error basically. Um, I'm hoping the original jet has a number on it and then we'll up jet from there. But at the moment this one doesn't. I've brought a selection with me, but we need to know where we're starting. Online yesterday I could find no information on, on the original carb at all, so we don't know what the original jetting is. It'd normally be roughly 98, but no markings at all. I can compare it kind of slightly, the whole slightly, to ones I've brought, but it's guesswork. My uh, my guess is a 105, a 105 up jet will just, will just take it to its kind of optimum performance at this stage. So that's what we're going to look at. Otherwise, the carb's identical. It doesn't have a separate choke. Well, it does have a separate choke, but that won't matter. We'll turn it to a, an automatic, um, and that's not an issue. So let's pull off this other jet and see what jetting we're working with. Right, guys, so we've popped the carb off here. There's some other things on this bike we were just, we were just discussing. Um, there's EGR systems in place. There's this one here. Normally, I'd blank that off if this was at my garage. I'd blank that off quite quickly because they, they just cause problems in the end. All you need to do is cut a little plate out of sheet metal, put the holes in the same place and block it there and that's it. You can cut this away or keep it, it doesn't matter. The bikes run better, they start better, they idle better without these. But we are looking at the actual carb. Now the carb I just took off, you see all this residue? That's from where it's been leaking. When we tip the fuel out... Um, it was red, so there's definitely rust in that car. I'm surprised it started at this stage. Um, so we're going to pop the this carb off. This was a running carb, so this, this bike did run. Um, so we'll pop this carb off. Let's see what the inside's like. I reckon we're looking at rust. Um, and then let's hope that the jet has a, um, a number on it so we know what we're starting with. Otherwise, I think I'm going to chuck in a 105 in hope that the original is a 98 but let's see let's pop this off let's see what the uh, inside's like uh, that is unbelievable this bike should not be running it's unbelievable what happens with this stuff is the um, fresh fuel goes in and then it, it liquidizes this and then it shoots it up through the carbs uh, for the jets and it it blocks them so that that is shocking that's one of the worst i've seen for a bike that is running, and that's one of the worst I've seen anyway. But for a bike that's running, that's unbelievable. Let's see if we have a rating on this. I think we do. Uh, 95, I think that says. 95. Good. I've bought a 100 jet. I think that will be the uh, that will be the answer to this up jet. But we can't use this carb. We can't use this carb as it is. Um, if I pull out these jets, which I will just to see them, we'll find that the the pilot holes will be blocked anyway but that is the worst I've seen in a long time um, so you can see feet and movement around me because I'm about to be lynched Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I mean that is that is unbelievable let me uh, switch you off so the old cobs running a 95 that's about stock um, I've got so many jets left from Jake Corb. If anyone needs any jets, get onto eBay or our Facebook page. Talk to Jake. He can sort you right out. Um, I believe I have 100 in here. Uh, going up by 5 is okay enough because I am going to put more air into that engine. I'm going to take the um, air. I'm going to take one of the uh, blockage screws off and we're going to add more air. So we're going up by 5. That's more air. And then you've got the exhaust and then we're up jetting by 1 extra so that's absolutely fine i'm hoping there is a hundred in here i believe there is 
chuck the 100 in there, chuck the carb back together, chuck the carb on, it'll go back to exactly how it was, but it should be running better. The size of that exhaust, guys. Um, let's start with the basics. It shouldn't leak, the fuel is on right now. It shouldn't leak and it should start up. It's what, midday now? So Sunday, it should be alright to start up. the back here. Right guys, like we said, it should start first. It's going to take a while to top up the um, the fuel. It then shouldn't leak um, and we might need to adjust the idle.
If it's safe enough, you go. What? You need a helmet. You need to fill your bike in case it don't feel as good as it did before because I didn't ride it. Alright guys, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Um, runs, rides, idles, great. Probably needs a bit of a service. Uh, just not... I mean, it runs and rides fine, just doesn't idle as smooth as it should. So my guess is the um, spark plug needs changing and the air filter was fine, but I'd go high flow now that we've upjetted. I'd go high flow within the air box and then this is going to run really well actually. Uh, but let, let's hear it anyway. That's the Black Widow exhaust. Way too big for the bike. Agreed? No. Way too big for the bike. Very loud. But the bike ran very well. I have driven this bike. Or ridden the bike. Not too big. To go. It's good to go. If anyone is interested in one of these exhausts, it's dustbin size or, or fist size. Um, it's quite cool. That wasn't bought for this bike, was it? That's not specific. You it just is. what? You put the bike brand in? Yes. Can't believe that. And it came up 200 mm for a uh, sim. 200 what? Mm. What? Well, it came up as it's 200 mm. That's the millimetre. Yeah, millimetre. Oh, really? Yeah, the millimetre. So, guys, just pulled away from um, Amanda's bike. That was running beautifully in the end. Uh, I want her to ride it and let me know how it goes. It should feel so much better than it did because it can't have been running properly uh, with that carb on it in that condition. The new carb slightly up to a 98 so from 95 to 98 and that high flow exhaust perfect setup running lovely but i thought i'm out of london i'm driving back towards um london but i'm passing that so should we drop in on that and see what he's doing i'd love to see that s3 up front i'm a bit annoyed that i didn't win that bike because i did have it i was looking at it um and that won it so i want to go and see it up front see if it's kind of any different in person and see what that's doing with it. So hopefully he's in, hopefully he's working, he normally will be. Otherwise we'll break into his garage and have a quick look. So Nat's here, and he was allowed to play out for a bit. Um, I'm just looking at this S3650, and Nat's talking through his ideas. Um, I love it. I really love this bike. It, its profile and its stance is brilliant. Um, he's going kind of around the ideas of what to do with the back end. The original rear end is there, you'll see that on his channel. Um, so we're just kind of looking at what he's, what route Nat's going down. If you want to actually see the kind of bike in its entirety with the rear end on, go to Nat's channel and look at it. Because up front, it's brilliant. It's got a lovely style. And the camera just doesn't capture that. It's had that little kickback the whole time though, and that's a brand new carb. So if it's not carb related or um, jet related, yeah. it, it's got to be something else. Um, I'm sure, I, I, my guess is that the valves need adjusting. Sorry guys, we were just looking at the uh, the bobber. I wanted to throw the, um, the fake nitrous bottle on. I don't think John's overly impressed, but... Um, <laughs> But it just adds, it's just, remember, it's just something to catch the eye, guys. It's a bit of colour, exactly. And my um, my Honda badges I've got 
are kind of burgundy. I'm going to go and get them actually. They're kind of burgundy and they go here and they're round. I don't know if they suit the bike, that's why I haven't put them on. So uh, here we go. Also, I'm going to cut them gaiters off, guys. They're coming off because they look fine like that. But when you load the bike, they look really stupid. Um, I'll show you. So they got to go. I'll cut them off. Um, I did put some uh, hammer right on this, this side just to clean it up. Yep. I do need to find the little um, the little breather for there and other than that, that's it for this bike. I'm not really doing anything else. I'm not putting any mirrors on, new owner can figure that out. Um, it's warm, it's not using any choke. Um, it sounds as great as it's ever going to sound guys. A little bit of smoke will be from the, uh, the wrap, the wrap always kind of burns in every time you turn it on. Uh, I like the little NOS bottle there, guys. Again, I just think it adds a tiny bit of color. Um, it's hard to secure it properly, so I'm gonna work out how to secure it properly. But... I mean, I love this bike. It still has that splutter, we were just listening to it. Maybe it was warming up. Um, it did have that bit of um, kickback splutter, but I reckon the valves need adjusting, and I can do that at some point. So I think I'll adjust the valves, and my guess is that one of the valves is too tight or too loose, um, letting in too much fuel or too much air, or, or vice versa. I reckon tidying up the valves will uh, will solve that kickback. I'm sure. At the moment, it runs and rides and pulls as strong as it should and we can't hear the valves which could mean they are a bit too tight apparently um, tapping valves can be a good sign sometimes it means they're loose but not overly loose uh, this bike's still here guys it's 1100 pounds let me know what you think uh, it's, uh, for me I, I'm not taking a penny less I'm happy to keep it I'm happy to use it for now I absolutely love it I love the NG paint it has a nice sound. This is a de-baffled Motad. Somebody de-baffled it. it. has a great sound. 